Welcome back to the podcast, episode 14. As always, you're here with Hoop, Saney, and the infamous ZZ Hunt Show. So I have a lot to say before we kick off today's episode. Uh, I want to start by apologizing for last time, episode 13. Our audio cut out for like the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the episode was was long enough. You heard us argue a lot. Uh, and going along with that, yes, we're still friends, okay? We're all here. We decided to record again today. The podcast is still together uh, for now. Uh, yeah, for now. For now. For now. I... There was one thing I wanted to get off last episode that I it just it crossed my mind and I texted Z afterwards. He had James Harden over LeBron as a scorer of all time. Don't want to get into it. I just had to let that go because I thought that was crazy. Uh, but I what I really wanted to talk about uh, in this introduction was an email that we got on our La Podcast Gmail account. It's proof that there's still good people in this world. <laughs> Some dude named Carlos just decided to send us an email with all our the podcast statistics that like I would not know how to find. He he told us that in the country Moldova, we are fourth in the basketball category. Shout out I don't Moldova. know if this is Spotify. It says the Apple Podcast rankings, which is crazy. So if y'all are from Moldova and apparently, I mean, you understand English. Like that's like th- I've I've never heard of that country before. I appreciate you guys so much. I will shout say, out. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Carlos wasn't doing a good deed. He was trying to advertise his podcasting. But he didn't make it like that. Like, bro, I, yeah, I appreciate true, true. Carlos. But if you read the end of the email, he's like, I got this from this website. And when I clicked on that website, it was like, get 50% off your first month. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay. dang it, Carlos. Yeah. Hey, well, I, I still appreciate Carlos because yeah, like this, this is enough for me. We're, we're ninth in Slovenia when it comes to basketball, 11th in Guatemala, 20th in the Bahamas. I'm not going to go keep going down, but uh that's impressive range. for all for i'm only saying is starting we're, we're, we're 46th on spotify i counted i like when i clicked the basketball podcast i counted like two days ago and we, we show up 46th and hey, the, US, the podcast in is the on world. the rise like bro the spotify charts good lord basketball charts it was like the 46th podcast that pops up when you click basketball so shout out to you guys we've been doing this for like two, two months by the end we of the really year, appreciate by the end it of the year we're going for first obviously yeah uh, By the end uh-huh. of the year, we're going for first for the Bahamas. Shoot so for we the, can shoot for the take, a look. <laughs> shoot for <laughs> take a vacation to Bahamas, bro. Facts. But uh, yeah, all you guys out there that want to listen and you are listening, join our chalkboard so you can talk to us when the podcast isn't running. Uh, link in our TikTok, Instagram, everything bio. Every day. Every day we it's going to be better when the NBA season starts because as of right now, you know, it's there's just tumbleweeds in the NBA world. Tumbleweeds. Uh, but aside from that, the time to get into today's lineup, starting off with everyone's favorite the headlines. Of course. Uh, then we got the Black Air Force backcourt. Yes, sir. Follow- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't spoil it. Followed- yeah. All right. Followed up by Fantasy GM and then the Le Q&A, which is sponsored by the Chalkboard. That, that going seems into like, that seems like we don't have a lot of segments, but Black Air Force backcourt is going to take us a while. Well, the fantasy yeah. draft too. Like we have, True. we have some substance today. Just, just want to make sure the uh, viewers know they're still. If it goes episode. short, if it goes short, I am gonna circle back to this. James Harden is a better scorer all time than LeBron James. Uh, nonsense. We gotta but... rush this then because I really want to hear that argument. But let's go. <laughs> I just want to hear what he wanted to say because, like, that's. I ain't got I shit to it. say. <laughs> we we did it. That's just that's just what it is. Yeah, I stand. Uh, but... <laughs> But going into the headlines, uh, LeBron came out and said that he is interested in playing with his younger son, Bryce James, in the NBA. Apparently, he keeps his eye on those with first-round draft picks, not only in these next coming years, but up to like 2027. I wonder uh, I wonder what team applies to that. Saney's a Thunder fan, for those out there. But I, I think someone did the math, and he'd be happy. He'd have to play till he was forty-one years old that's to easy. get to that's easy. That's for doable. Draft that's easy for it's the problem. It's it's easy, and I think what did Vince Carter play till forty-two or forty-three? And, and and understand this: like the thing about LeBron James is that he's so versatile that he can completely transition his game to be like a Chris Paul type player, where he's not like jumping all over the place, running everything. Like any team would take LeBron as just like a veteran point guard. Like, he could literally yeah. play till he's 40, 45 if he wanted to. 50, even. I could argue 50. 
just from his back. I, yeah, I think he could definitely play until like 46. Yeah, bro, realistically. Like, and, and, and I don't know if you guys crazy. know this. I don't know if you guys know this, but like, I remember watching this thing. LeBron invests like $3 million a year just on his body alone. Like like a wild yeah. number on just recovery alone. Do you know how much money that is? Like the guy is strict on diet. The guy is strict on recovery. He wears those leg sleeves 24-7. His whole life is around keeping his body in shape for basketball. So I can 100% see LeBron James become the Tom Brady of the NBA. And if some odd reason he doesn't, Steph Curry is next in line for playing to a high age. On top of, uh, on top of him talking about LeBron, you know, just having a knack for his body and all that. He also has a knack for his phone service, you know, his data. And I just think that that's just admirable for me looking at a millionaire who literally will not turn his data on and waste data on anything. He'll be on, he'll be on anybody's internet connection. That's what I, that's what I respect the most about LeBron James. He's, he's a billionaire and he's using his phone like me. So I feel like I am one with LeBron James right now. <laughs> that was a crazy story. Cause when I was younger and you know, we didn't have unlimited service. I just want to play clash of clans when i wasn't at home <laughs> and i was like if i had unlimited data i would just be grinding clash of clans and my my village is nasty by the way for me it was Pokemon you know i've Go. i've taken oh wow that's a throwback but i've you know i've taken breaks uh here and there but i think i'm a maxed out like completely town hall 11 like i'm ready to like the walls are done. I'm ready to go to 12. But uh, that's where I'm at. <laughs> we're, we're kind of fading away from basketball. But real quick, I am, but... before, before we get back into the basketball discussion, I just want to say this. I one time ended a friendship because of data or data. I don't know how, how people would say it. But because yeah, Pokemon Go, um, I went on my friend's phone secretly and hotspotted myself. So I could play what? Pokemon Go. <laughs> Yo, you deserve that. Nah, bro. Oh, it was, God. It was, bro, Heck like, no. I had to, bro. Like, the grind was real back then, fam. Like, what do you want me to do? Bro, Sandy, you Shout remind me of... What, what was the what was the, uh, what was the dude's... The fox's name on Dora? Uh, oh, Swiper the Fox. Swiper the yes. Fox. I would swipe no, away your data. No, you're Sandy the Fox. Uh, yeah, That's literally. what it is. And I would, I would take away... Your data, so I could play Pokemon Go. But let's let's say no. Oh, that is actually so nasty. <laughs> but uh, getting back into this to the headlines, I think we all knew that LeBron. You know, if he wants to, he could play till however old he wants to play. One hundred percent. But when it comes to his legacy, even if it's not a thought in his mind, like yeah, I'll play to fifty, even if that you know makes people view me differently. Mm -hmm. How do you think LeBron would end his legacy to make it? Like the best is possible. For example, if let's say the Lakers go on a magical championship run this year, do you think it would make sense for him to retire on top or down the line if he makes a nice playoff push? Like, what do you think would would service his legacy the best? I don't think like if you let's say hypothetically they did go on a magical championship run this season or next season, whatever. Like like when a player should usually retire, like at the late 30s, early 40s. I don't think he should retire if he doesn't want to. I mean, if you're able to continue. No, no, no. But if, if you're LeBron James, would like, if this is not his mind, like playing. this is I your. Playing. Because as LeBron James, you have to understand the difference between a guy like Vince Carter playing until 43 and LeBron James playing until 43. Vince Carter is a bench warmer at 43. LeBron James is a solid starter, possible all-star at 43 you know what i mean actually guaranteed all-star lebron james is like kobe bryant where if he's in the when league he's in he's the going, league he's going to be yeah. Awesome. yeah let's be honest right so to add to that legacy where you can end your career saying you were a 20 plus time all-star he's probably going to make a couple more all nba teams if we're being honest um at one point in his career if he decides to transition into more of a playmaker he could be an assist leader at some point like he led the yeah. league in assists you know what i mean like that's that is 100 possible for lebron james and when you're LeBron and you understand that you have the, the facilities to keep adding to your greatness and every, and every season being a top 10, top 15 player, why would you retire? You're trying to be the no cap, right? So I would just keep adding See, on to my legacy. I would literally make it impossible for any other player to try and reach the accomplishments I have reached as a player. Because not only do you have to be that good, you have to be that good for that long. And that is very the longevity. The longevity. LeBron James is the greatest longevity athlete ever. Uh, it's funny you say that because Serena Williams just beat the two uh, seed yesterday, bro. I don't give a damn. I'm kidding. I love Serena Williams, bro. She's bro, dating. she's freaking that's dating. In, you you have a child. Yeah. And you're still like beating up on the two seed at the U.S. Open. Well, would you rather have that, or would you rather be LeBron 
and beat up on the league for 20 years and then have your well, sons come in I'm and not join to, your sons uh, okay. <laughs> and then beat up on the league with your sons. That's, to yeah. me, when, Le- when LeBron's kids get in the league, bro, and Bryce and Bronny get in the league, like, just – what. We've never seen a story like that. A, a guy yeah. who dominated for 20 years, his sons were born um, literally when he walked into the league. He watched him win championships, watched him win finals, MVPs, MVPs. Then he, tr- then they transitioned over back into that same league, and he's still playing. Imagine like, if, if Bronny and Bryce, at their age, had the media coverage of Jason Tatum's son, Deuce. Oh, how incredible that would be okay like Duke. you know how people look at deuce and yeah. like if if he actually got to play with jason tatum in the league that would be like it would blow up the internet because people have watched deuce say you know i can't wait to go to miami and go in the pool yeah as like a four-year-old but like imagine if Bronny and bryce had that kind of like this is what we're we're looking at in real life people don't realize it because they didn't have media coverage back then for that so do y'all think that so lebron i feel like this is just a thought, but LeBron and Bronny and Bryce, right? LeBron will become, they'll become the first father-son duo to team up or whatever. But imagine, I feel like LeBron could probably be the trendsetter for that. And then when Deuce gets older, like, we'll look at The back league like, is too talented. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. it is wild. Like, that is crazy. There's a difference because, like, with LeBron James, you know, arguably he's the greatest player of all time. So he mm-hmm. has the power to just bring his son into the league. I feel like Jason Tatum... As great of a player as he is, I don't think he's ever going to crap like top five, top ten of all time, right? That's not nah, to me. Nah, that's not realistic, nah. right? And how good is Jason Tatum really going to be at the age of like thirty six, thirty seven, or whatever age he would be when Deuce is able to get into the league? And if Deuce doesn't pan out, he's not going to have the power to be like, I'll sign to whatever team drafts Deuce. They're going to be like, okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, no, that, that's fair, that's, that's fair, like, that's fair. No, but with LeBron James, it's like. Any team yes. is pulling the trigger on a vet minimum deal for LeBron James. Any any team. Like, if LeBron James is saying, I'll sign for whatever, let me play with my son, just use your second-round pick on him. Because I, I don't know if Bronny's going to be a lottery pick or even a first-round pick because his his draft class is really talented, even though I do think Bronny is a sick hooper, and I think he, he can make a career for himself in the NBA for sure, uh, especially the background he's coming from and, like, how much money his dad would be willing to invest in his body and in his uh, training, of course. But... You know, if I'm a GM, I'm I'm like, who else am I going to use on the second round pick? I'll, I'll take Bronny and get LeBron James on the team because that's that's a great yeah. bet to have on your squad. Yeah. That's a great guy. Imagine how much money you make as a business. If you're looking at the NBA team as a business, right? How much money that team would make just from bringing in a guy like LeBron and Bronny and having them play on the same team. That would be a sellout crowd. Yeah, that, every that could game. turn a small market into a big into market. a big market instantly. I that's like, insane. Imagine the numbers Oklahoma would do if they drafted Bronny. I mean, they you could literally go home of like, They got people driving down from Iowa yeah, to like, watch LeBron James play some basketball. And it's hey, it's, it's literally like whatever team does that, they're going to be cemented in history as the as the team that allowed LeBron James to play with his son. So It's going to be Portland for real. But nobody's going to say that about Jason there. Tatum and Deuce. Like we're not going to be like cuz hey, by I'm then just that's saying. already going to happen. We like by the time Jason Tatum and Deuce are able to play together, more likely than not LeBron and Bronny would have already played together. So it's like, okay. You know what I mean? I'm just saying Julius Randle's son, Kaiden, is on the hey. come up. <laughs> uh, Dwayne Wade, Dwayne yeah, Wade could have, Curry's honestly, Dwayne Wade could have done it. His kid's playing for the G League in Utah right now. Like, Dwayne Wade could have played a game with Zaire if he just stayed I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see Cannon Curry. Because his name's already tough. So, yeah. like, if your dad's the greatest shooter of all Cannon time, your name's Cannons, Cannon. Bro. Cannon shooting Bruh. cannons, that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Cannon is a <laughs> crazy name. Bro, that's, that's literally right, we should. Uh, All right, yeah, we should continue. We should probably move on. Like Moving that's... on from Cannon Curry, aka C squared, we're gonna move on to Black Air Force backcourt. That is what we're talking about today, and what we're talking about specifically is more or less Russell Westbrook and Patrick Beverly. Everybody knows Russell Westbrook's low key biggest. Uh, I wouldn't say rival. I'd just say the one guy he has the most beef with that literally spans years is Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly trick y'all, man. He don't play no defense. Patrick Beverly rocks the ba- baby back to Russell Westbrook after Russell Westbrook does it to him five million times. Now they're on the same damn team in L.A., as you see Sandy pointing out his action figure. Anyway, they're on the same team in L.A. now. So my question to Hoop and Sandy is, are the Los Angeles Lakers better with this acquisition of Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook being 
in the backcourt because Darvin Ham did say that he plans on mocking up some ro- some roster rotations to get them on the court at the same time. So my question to you guys is, does this help the Lakers or hinder the Lakers? Well, I think it's obviously a help because I think they gave up Stanley Johnson and Taylor Horton Tucker, if right. I'm not wrong. Correct. So like Pat Bev is instantly a playoff rotation piece. And when you're looking at the Lakers, you're assuming if they're healthy, they're a playoff team. So you're really looking at the eight guys that are going to be in the playoff rotation. Pat Bev, 100% can give you big minutes in a playoff rotation. Um, I, I don't know how much this raises their ceiling. I'd love to believe that all these older guys are going to look at Pat Bev and feed off his energy. Um, I'm just excited as an East Coast basketball fan that I get to watch the Lakers play at night because the 10 p.m. games or like the late night games last year when everyone was injured, it was just so ugly to watch. But when I could see Russell Wesser and Patrick Beverly <laughs> like jawing at each other on the court be crazy. and like I can't wait to watch LeBron and Pat Bev's like heads butt like as leaders, it's going to be incredible. Uh, as leaders? I will. Pat, yeah, Pat, Pat Beverly is a hundred percent a leader. A hundred percent. Okay, okay. Like if I you know have he's, he's going into that locker room saying, "LeBron, you take the offense. I got the, the defense. defense. Literally, like, I got the right. defense. Like, I am a hundred percent positive that's Pat what will happen. Pat will one hundred percent be more vocal than LeBron James for the Lakers this season. Vocal wise, they're gonna Pat if they're healthy, they're gonna be nasty. Hundred percent. He's gonna get the best out of Anthony Davis and whoever's on that team, and or Russell else he's gonna sit out. And, and if was, they refuse to play defense, Patrick Beverly will request a trade out of Los Angeles. I think that's what he will do. I think that Patrick Beverly, if Russell Westbrook stays on the Lakers, Patrick Beverly was one of the best things the Lakers could have brought in for Russell Westbrook. And I do agree Fast. with you, Hoop, with Anthony Davis as well. That Anthony Davis's issue was health. It wasn't like every time he played, he seemed like he wasn't fully healthy. He was chucking up these random free throw floaters. Whatever. He's going to tell him to play like a big He's man. He's going to tell him to play like a big man. But with Russell Westbrook, I think his biggest issue was confidence. I feel like when Westbrook got into the LA atmosphere and he saw how terrible the fans treated him, that's when we saw Russell Westbrook play like a guy that didn't deserve to be in the league. Russell Westbrook 100% has the talent to come back to maybe not 2017 Russ, but he could still be a productive starting point guard. And I feel like Patrick Beverly is going to be in his ear, John Adam, making the guy more confident, being in his face 24-7 and just getting him hype. And Patrick Beverly is the perfect guy in the NBA to have on your squad when you have a team full of guys. Perfect example, the Minnesota Timberwolves, who are full of talent and have no grit. You bring a guy like Patrick Beverly in, you're going to the playoffs. You're going to the playoffs. And one more thing I want to add. Russ has all the physical tools to be a harassing defender. Mm -hmm. Like one of the most athletic guards of all time. Dude looks like a middle linebacker. Like if Russ were to give, which I think he should focus on defense this year when he got LeBron as the primary ball handler. If he could be a three and D, like just even if he camps in the corner every other possession, Mm -hmm. like he's a, he's a pretty good corner three shooter. People don't give him credit for that. But if he can be like a nice on ball defender, when you got Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook diving after loose balls and like feeding it, like Russ running in transition, feeding off to LeBron and AD, that's disgusting. So yeah. like in theory, with Patrick Beverly on the team, this should all work out. I love the new head coach, Darvin Ham. I love him too. He's you know, a defensive just, just minded. See, 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 my like, thing is like the biggest thing with the Lakers was defense and the fact they bring in a guy like Pat Bev and Darvin Ham, I think they make a big jump defensively. But sorry, Z. Yeah, that's that no, I was about to say the same thing. Like uh I'm a big fan of Darvin Ham since he came in. Um, I was more of, I, and the thing is, is that Frank Vogel wasn't really that bad looking back. I don't on respect it. Frank Vogel. Though. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't that bad. I just feel like it was more situational based for him. Cause if you're a coach and you're, and, and you're handed the Los Angeles freaking Lakers, LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook, and you're kind of expected, you know, to, to win now at least. Something. Well, that's not and what else, happened. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So when that doesn't happen. We look and we can point fingers like everybody got the finger pointed at them, probably except LeBron uh, last last season for the Lakers. And Grant, and definitively so, LeBron was still the best player on the team by far at age 37. So we, re- we really didn't expect LeBron to have to do as much as he was trying to do last year. But this year, bringing in Patrick Beverly, I agree, it's a it's a fresh face defense at the end of the day with an energized bunny like Patrick Beverly. Not, not to mention the track record of Patrick Beverly. We already know Patrick Beverly has never missed the playoffs since he's been in the league. And honestly, you know, he has a case for the Hall of Fame. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I just think that the whole entire identity of the Los Angeles Lakers is going to shift. Now, I don't know. I really don't know. Because last year, before the season started, I knew. I knew it was going to be a failure. I just looked at the team. They did not. They, they weren't contending for anything. But... The reason, the, the biggest reason for that was because they had all them old heads on the team. 
new coach, new identity, new presence. Russell Westbrook doesn't have to do as much. Like you said, he's a, he's a great corner shooter. No one gives him credit for it. So I think that realistically, Russ could take some possessions where he's either running the fast break himself or he's just camping out in that corner. But Russ is going to have a lot of guys in his ear this year, like Pat Bev, like LeBron, and maybe AD if he's healthy, to just tell him like, hey, you don't have to do as much as you did last year. It's going to be a learning lesson for Russ. I really hope Russ bounces back this season and jumps back into the top five point guard debate, maybe. I just really hope he has a better year because that, that year last year, oh my God, I don't think I've seen anybody get slandered as badly as Russ. And I want to say KD, but KD was getting slandered and playing beautiful basketball for the best team ever assembled. So his slander isn't the same as Russ because Russ's was just, he was getting slandered for his basketball play, not his basketball decisions like KD was. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see how this, how this pans out. That's well, going point. back, going back to Vogel, uh, I do want to give him some credit because he is a great head coach. He won a mm-hmm. championship with the Lakers in the bubble, yeah. which if you ask the players, it's the hardest season ever played. Mm-hmm. Um, the only difference is then they had Alex Caruso, they had KCP, they right. had Kyle Kuzma. So now when the new face comes in, you have Russ, you bring in, I don't recall, you know, obviously Mello was new, but a bunch of, a bunch of older heads. And when they're combined and they have like six guys who have been all NBA before, they mm-hmm. look at Frank Vogel, and it's just not the same as a bunch of young guys who are hungry looking up to Vogel as a defensive-minded coach. Vogel's defensive-minded. Right. And with Caruso and KCP, it all worked out. And a healthy Dwight Anthony Howard. Davis. Yeah. But now when you bring in these, these new guys, uh, I don't want to blame Melo. I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. what's I, going I, you on. Can't, you can't really blame Melo. But yeah, it's just it's, – well, he played very well. It's just it, – it's a collective effort with all these older guys when it's just they, you know – I think either they look to LeBron and look at what their leader's doing, or they look at each other like, yeah, we played this game for 13 plus years. You know, let's just work this out ourselves instead of looking up to their coach. Darvin right. Ham, as a former player, I think brings a different aspect of that since LeBron, I believe, played against Darvin Ham. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. I think. Zane, you got anything else? Uh, well, obviously, I don't want to end this segment yet. I think we should still talk about the Lakers for uh, a I think- while. We should harp on Russ. Like, yeah. do you think that his him being on the team hinders their ceiling? Like, do you think if they got no. rid of him and got no. Buddy uh-uh. healed? No. You want to know why? That's not good. Like, for them to get Buddy healed for Russell Westbrook, the Lakers have to give up their future for the 2020s. Like, literally, they won't have a draft pick in the 2020s. They won't have what a draft is draft. their future, though? It's not Buddy healed. Buddy healed is 29 years old. <laughs> Bro, no, and I'm saying if they keep their healed? picks, if they keep their whatever it's going to be, like a twenty, a twentieth selection, a twenty in the no, first a, round, a twenty twenty seven pick and a twenty twenty nine pick is exactly what the Lakers need to keep because LeBron's not going to stay till twenty twenty seven, AD's not going to stay till twenty twenty seven. By the time we hit those years, the Lakers are going to be at the bottom of the Western Conference, the bottom of the pitch. We're oh, would see, you rather? We're going to see a 2015, a f- 2016, or twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen type Lakers team near the mid 2020s so why would i give up my dr- like because you're not trading russ for a good rotational piece unless you're giving up a, a big chunk of your future actually your whole future in the 2020s you're not mm-hmm. that's just not the case why would i do that for buddy healed when i personally i don't see the big thing about if buddy Heald goes to the lakers they become a championship team no they do not no they do not what does What's their problem then bro i think that i think the nba is is much better has much more talent than the Lakers would have with uh, what's Westbrook and Buddy Heald. Like I don't, I don't see them making that much bigger of a jump if they bring in a guy more like talent. Buddy Hield. Not more, ta- like a more of a chance Let's... to win a championship. Like I don't see. I think the Lakers with Buddy Heald are still a second round exit. Are is... like I think teams like the Warriors would beat them. I think teams like are the you Suns factoring? Would beat them. Are you factoring I... Anthony Davis's health into this? That's like if you a have a big, fully health, that's such I a know big it's an hypothetical if. thing, though. That's what I mean. Like, here's the thing, hoop. If we're talking, if I'm talking, if we started this podcast last year and we're talking September 2021, then I'd be like, yeah, there's a big chance Anthony Davis is going to be healthy and they're going to do good if Anthony Davis is healthy. At this point, it's like, if Anthony, like, I hate using that if Anthony Davis is healthy because he's never healthy. The guy is never healthy. It's such. We know what he can do. At, we know what he can do when he's healthy. We when know he's, he's a healthy. top five, top five player, top ten player, but or whatever. He's not like but, that anymore. And I feel like yeah. what, even if he were to bounce back from his injuries and he was healthy and he was playing at, at the Anthony Davis level, we know. I feel like there's so much more big man talent in the league now that Anthony Davis can get canceled out by a lot of guys in the West. Nikola Jokic, 
Uh, for example, like if I'm matching up Nikola Jokic with Anthony Davis, I'm taking Nikola Jokic any day of the week. A healthy Anthony Davis He's over a healthy not, Nikola uh, Jokic. I'm taking Nikola Jokic. I am. On a matchup basis, I think Anthony Davis would do work on Jokic. For a player perspective, Jokic is going to make his team much better than I think Anthony they cancel, Davis that's what I'm trying to, I think they cancel each other out. But uh, I mean, I could see it's it. Either like, they cancel also, each other out and you have LeBron James on your team to take out Jamal Murray and whoever, if you want to talk talent-wise, but then you also or Anthony Jr. Davis is hurt. I don't, I don't well, here's, here's, my, here's my thing. Here's my thing, and it's been like my biggest problem analyzing Anthony Davis, especially last season. Going into the season, I literally was like, we, we said the same thing, if he's healthy, whatever. But to me, it wasn't even just about if he was healthy. It was also a matter of when he is healthy, how is he going to play? 100%. Is he going to play like a five? Or, or is Chris he going to try and play? Exactly. And so, and, and that was that was the biggest grudge, the biggest problem, especially all over the NBA. Like media fans were even saying that Lakers fans were saying that. Like Anthony, like when he was talking about the matchup between Anthony Davis and, and Nikola Jokic, right? You don't know what Anthony Davis you're going to get if you're matching up with Jokic. You don't know if if Anthony Davis is going to try and pull him out to the perimeter and do those step back mid ranges or whatever. Like you don't, or or if he's going to go and, and and hit him with post moves, you don't know. Where with Jokic, his game is literally kind of just, he's so composed and he knows exactly what he's going to do. You don't know if he's going to hit you with a spinning hook shot from the free throw line, a spinning, a, a fadeaway like he hit on Giannis, a three pointer, a no look pass. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with Saini here, uh, agreement with Saini here. I'm going to take Jokic in that matchup spe specifically because you don't know what you're going to get with Anthony Davis when he's healthy. You don't know how he's going to want to play. That was the biggest problem for the Lakers last year because I feel like, Vogel wasn't as vocal with Anthony Davis 100%. to play the five. That was the biggest problem for me. I was like, the, the Lakers literally look like they don't know what they're doing. You have LeBron, Russell Westbrook, and Anthony Davis, and all of them want to shoot. What? And, and on top of everything, it's not like he was a good shooter. Anthony Davis was one of the exactly. worst three-point shooters in the league. It's like, so what are we oh, doing here? But if he played, if this is New Orleans Pelican, Anthony Davis, it's a different story. Because yeah, he's in the post. If, like that's he's the biggest in the post if. doing it. That's yeah. the biggest if in the world at this point. It's like if. So for me, so for me, I don't want to I don't want to give up on Anthony Davis because I just feel like that's just BS. The problem is just I just want him to play like I've seen him play, like I watched him play growing up. And he was really dominant at it. He was an all-star MVP at it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just what I feel like the Lakers are going to need in order to be successful. Everybody to play like they should play, not how they think the league like has shifted and now threes or everything. You know what I'm saying? We had this discussion on one of the episodes where it was like, if you're the Lakers and LeBron is shooting 11 threes a game, you're going to lose. But if you also have LeBron bringing up the court and Russell Westbrook is your shooting guard and he's not in the corner, you're going to lose. And then if you have that mixed with, all together with Anthony Davis wanting to be Kevin Durant, it's not going to work either. So the Lakers have like the tools they, or the pieces. They just got to put them together the right way. Yeah. And they can be I, successful. I agree. It's a huge if. And I want to mm -hmm. reiterate myself. I don't think that Jokic is a worse player than Anthony Davis when he's healthy. It was more mm -hmm. so the fact that I don't think Jokic would bottle up a healthy yeah, yeah. I, I can agree okay. like I, I know what you meant and and when I said it, I didn't mean like Jokic is gonna lock Anthony Davis up and he's not doing anything yeah. Yeah. yeah I meant it as like if I'm the Nuggets I don't see Anthony Davis like putting up 30 a game as like a big concern for me because Jokic is on the court and Jokic is gonna cancel that out because on the other end Jokic is gonna give him the same work mm -hmm. and Jokic is gonna, um and, and I, I don't see I don't see Anthony Davis shutting down Nikola Jokic just as well as I don't see Nikola Jokic shutting down a healthy Anthony Davis and I do see your point where it's like, okay, well, Anthony Davis is out the way. What about LeBron James? But I don't think you understand how deep that Nuggets team is now, especially with the addition of Bruce Brown. I, I think Bruce Brown sick, was one of the best additions of this offseason. Addition, right? And I, and another thing, I know our whole point was about Buddy Heald, right? Like, I think that's how this conversation They got started. KCP, too. And they got KCP, too. Exactly. Like, they're a sick team. Um, yeah. I like, I, I like the idea of Buddy Heald on the Lakers. I don't like the idea that people think that giving up Russell Westbrook – at first, it was at first the original trade package. I'll give this to you guys. It was Russell Westbrook, Taylor Horton Tucker when he was still on the team, and the 2027 first round pick and the 2029 first round pick for Buddy Heald, Miles Turner, and Daniel Thice. The deal breaker was that the Lakers didn't want to take on Daniel Thice's contract because they would have been down the mud in luxury <laughs> tax if they took that deal. Okay. But another thing is, you're like, oh, Miles Turner is a great guy to have on because then you can play Anthony Davis at the four. 
Uh, here's a news flash. Miles uh, Miles Turner is just as injury prone as Anthony yeah. Davis is. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna have literally glass figures at in your front court with Miles Turner and Anthony Davis. Both of them great defenders when they're healthy, sure. But again, it's a when they're healthy. And whenever you're talking about a player and you have to mention the fact that if they're healthy, they'll be good. I, I will never bet on a player like that going into the season. I never will. Because nine times no, – I'm not going to say nine times out of ten. Five times out of ten, something happens to them. It is too much of a risk to bet on a player that you have to sit down and think, this will work when they're healthy, so let's just put all our pieces into it and hope they stay healthy and everything works out. No, 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 no. You never want to do that, especially when Anthony Davis is supposed to be your, your number one option on offense. I don't know if you guys saw that, but Darvin Ham is expected to run the offense through Anthony Davis. That's going to work for a solid five games before Anthony Davis starts holding his Achilles and limping off the court like he always does every second game. But, I mean, I don't know. I guess... I would rather keep Russell Westbrook at this point and just see how it works. And if it doesn't work, just blow it all up. Get rid of everybody. Try to get as many draft picks as you can back to the Lakers and just restart again. Because guess what? Uh, that whole blow-up situation they did with uh, when they started their rebuild in 2014, 2015, it led to a championship five years later. It did. And I don't see the Lakers being able to contend for everything if they keep, keep trying to string along this mediocre squad they have and try to keep, and adding, also these, think keep adding these mediocre, overrated pieces and, they're, and they become overrated just because they go to the Lakers. People think, oh, they're going to turn up and then nothing happens they get out in the first they don't even make the playoffs uh, uh, for example like this year and then it's like can i just what the add hell do we something do sure i know z said before the lakers have the tools it's just not you know the glue isn't there and the you don't know if they're gonna stay healthy i think when we discussed before pat bev and darvin ham are the two pieces of glue that okay. make this team with a higher floor mm -hmm. so i mean the lakers underperformed even like their worst expectations last year they're only going up from last year right so they're like a, a play-in team at like the very worst <laughs> um and when it comes to russell westbrook i think if you were to give him away let's say they start out with russ the, the season with russ lebron and anthony davis they run the they run their offense through ad westbrook just can't find his role the problem with the Lakers in holding on to him and deciding to not win a championship this year is they just paid LeBron like the most money, like, you know, yeah. for two years. He's making like $50 million a year or something like that. Right. Yeah. So when it comes to the whole blow up situation, like they should have done that before. Now that they're committed to win, I think you need to make the moves to win. Even like if Westbrook limits your ceiling, you should go out and get a shooter. Even if like if you're going to, it's either you're mediocre now and you're mediocre later, or you win a championship now, or try to win a championship for the next two years, and then you're, you're still mediocre later. So I think, you know, like, the rebuild, the, the, the Lakers in the late 20s are going to be bad no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know if there's a way that you could flip this. I don't know what LeBron's trade value is. Anthony Davis, like, they're just, Especially they're aging LeBron out. LeBron is literally coming out and saying, I'm going to go play with Bronny and Bryce no matter what. Like, yeah, would so, when you, so when you have a core right now, of a prime age Anthony Davis who like it's still like it's not it's not uh not a possibility that he's you know mm -hmm. not healthy right um LeBron who's still a 30 point per game score when he wants to be I think you need to try to win a championship so whatever that means they brought in Pat Bev they let go of again Taylor Horton Tucker someone they thought they could de develop they're like making win now moves repeatedly I mm -hmm. think you need to figure it out. You could have you could have not gotten Russ and kept Alex Caruso and Kyle Kuzma. That would that team would be much better than the team they have now. So I yeah. think now that you're all in, you got to go for it. I, so I, if that means getting rid of Russ for it, I think Russ can work out personally. But if if you think your ceiling is not a championship with Russ and it is with someone else, you got to make the move. I will be honest. I did not take into account that LeBron just signed that extension. I completely forgot about that when I said that if it doesn't work out, just blow it all up. Uh, so I do definitely see your side of things. And like, I guess, like, in my opinion, it, what, like, the Buddy Heald and the Miles Turner trade, how, how much farther can that really get the Lakers? Um, but when you look at it from that perspective, yeah, I guess, like, pull the trigger. Just give up your future at that point. Either way, you're going to be bad in the 2020s. You're the Lakers. You're a big market team. I'm sure something yeah. will go your way. You're always going to sell out. You're like, going to sell out a crowd even, no matter what, so... Even in the even in the later stages of this decade, like if they because they're we're gonna blow it up eventually, but when they do, it's still the Lakers. Like so, somebody's gonna want a star's gonna want to try his luck in L.A. Right. 
rather if he's born there or if he's a, he was a Laker fan growing up. Like, it's going to happen. Like, I could definitely see Tatum playing for the Lakers at one point. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was saying that too. Yeah. I could see a guy like Tatum playing for the Lakers, like, down the line. That would um, be very interesting how Boston would respond. They would keep Jalen Brown, and then it would be the matchup of the year. No, it would be I'd like – what? Like, here's the thing. Whenever a young guy loves a team, I have learned, especially th- through my time watching the NBA, do not think he's going to stay with that team for the rest of his career. Like, mm-hmm. he is – bound to leave in free agency i feel like jason tatum at some point the celtics are going to do something to mess up his relationship with them and he'll probably i don't think he's going to stay with the celtics his whole career if i'm being honest um wh- like why would you want to do that like if they don't win a ring soon why would he want to stay true you know what i mean and they've had they've had opportunities they've ever had since he walked in the door they've had oppor- literally every season since jason tatum has come into the league they've be, they've been a contender. Kyrie, yeah they've should have like they, they should have had a run at a title and to be fair i mean they did make it to the finals this year and they choked heavy and a big reason to that was jason tatum he decided to choke um but yeah i, I don't, don't think they were a finals team though to be completely yeah to, yeah they had a fluky run I think, but like you have i don't to i don't want to call it a, i don't want to call it an entire fluky run because they were you know best defense in the league but Giannis kicking the ball out to chris middleton instead of grayson allen would have made a huge difference yeah no, they, the shooters middleton. were awful in that series Chris Giannis was doing everything. Giannis, or Chris Middleton was also injured. That's why I think it's a little fluky. Like I think if the fact That's that Giannis took saying. the Celtics to seven games without Chris Middleton, yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not hating on the fact that it was a fluky run. There's a lot of fluky run championship teams, but you have to take advantage of that fluky run. Be, having a fluky yeah. run doesn't mean you're a bad team. Having a fluky run means that you took advantage of an opportunity that makes you a finals team like the celtics should not have went to the finals over the bucks but guess what something happened and they took advantage of it but then you let the warriors just come back on you when you were up 2-1 and you don't win a single game after that it's like come on bro they should have won that they had it in the bag and even in game four there was a point where they had the lead in in the fourth quarter or the end of the third quarter if i remember correctly and then curry just turned up curry just turned up it's a damn they had a chance to close it out yeah it's a damn shame that both of the times that they really could have won a title the first time Tatum was 19 and they ran into LeBron. And then the second time Tatum has Deuce and they ran into Steph. So it's like, damn. Just like who, like they got to wait for Steph and LeBron to retire. And the one time they were supposed to be up another all-star with Gordon Hayward, which yep. is crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't but, blame uh, the Celtics for all of their like seasons that ended without a finals mm-hmm. run. Obviously, like most of them came from injuries and stuff. But for example, in the bubble, they had a good chance to go at it in the bubble. They got destroyed by yeah. the heat. Like I don't, mm-hmm. I think that Celtics team was better than that. That bam block, yeah, that, that bam block, that block, bam block uh. I think Tatum shouldn't have went for that dunk. It, like that's well, all right. Thing. We're getting really, yeah, really we're getting really off topic. track. We we're, were talking really about the Lakers. And, I know, but I'm just saying, like, on. it's just a, it's just my point is like, never assume a young star is gonna stay with a team for the rest of his career and always expect the unexpected. Oh God, R.J. Barrett's and Nick for life. Oh, Don't God. speak that into existence. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, one thing about the Knicks is that they are mediocre, and that is the worst spot to be in in the NBA. To be a mediocre RJ, team. We're not going to be mediocre for long. It's, you, we're you due. You didn't even say that confidently. We're due. Due for who? Due for what? We're due Jaylen for Brunson someone to NBA? develop. Hey, man. If you, look at the, <laughs> if you look at the prospects right now, you're either going to get Donovan Mitchell, someone who is not mediocre, you're, I, or you're going to develop one of three Obi Toppin, uh, Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes into a uh, <laughs> look. He's he's like trying to playoff rotation he's role player. Look hey. at he's trying to convince himself. Something Ooh. good's gonna happen. Who you sound like a kid that just got told that Santa Claus wasn't real, and then you're trying to <laughs> go back like, nah, and figure nah, out the cookies on, were bro. eaten and the milk was sipped from. So you guys got. I promise. That I promise. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. It was, it was your neighbor. Crazy. Like, bro, what? <laughs> oh, Come on. We will. All we right, will have an all star this year. <laughs> let's let's not bring up Santa Claus. There will be an all star. You lucky in I blue and orange this team. year. I don't think there will be. That's my outtake. take. I don't think the next Julius Randle, if he were to go through the San Antonio Spurs, I'm telling you right now, he's averaging 28 in an all star. Yeah, but he's not going to be in an all star game in a Knicks jersey. He'll be an all star in a Spurs jersey. That's the difference. I'm saying, like, the talent is there. It's that's what you. I, that's what I hate when people underrate Julius Randle. I'm not they don't him. watch the Knicks. I'm not underrating him. You just said that the Knicks are going to have an all-star, but then said Julius I'm not Randle talking about you. I'm just going on a tangent because like, I... <laughs> I, I just, just, the Thunder I are going to have up. an all-star, but Kevin Durant on the Nets? Let's be honest. Bro, I... Because I posted a video 
of the the Knicks Celtics opening night from last I year. I saw that. I saw. And it. I said, you know, it it tricked all Knicks fans because we thought Julius Randle was going to be good again. Right. And I mentioned the All NBA selection. He was second team two years ago, which right. personally I think I don't know if he deserved second team. He definitely de- deserved all the team. He, yeah, he was All NBA for sure. But someone told me he didn't deserve it, and I was, Ugh, it ticks me <laughs> off. It ticked. He, he is. A, he made the. He Knicks is one of the game. best. He's one of the best face-up bigs in the yeah, league. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, in terms fair. of skill, I love one how of the we're best like, face-up bigs these are in the just league. Not part of the segments. We're just. I don't. I I have been waiting to get this out. I. Uh, there's okay. no. There, no, you know what the problem is? There's no <laughs> Knicks fans who support Julius Randle anymore. It's me Hell against no. the world. Hell it's no. me against the world. <laughs> it's just you. I got his bobblehead sitting up on that. On that shelf right there. How do you think I support Julius Randle? How do you think I feel about being a Westbrook fan? How do you think I feel feel about being? But you have you have other other people to consult with. I have me myself and I. It's no, it's you and King Julius. That's what it is. It's me. It's me, his son, and his wife. That's it. You should be invited over to family dinner. Imagine, oh imagine goodness. hoop at a Julius Randle dinner, and he's just like, hey, "I'm man. telling you, man, I was telling those kids, you are <laughs> the greatest big man face up shooter ever." And then oh, Julius he... is gonna be like, "You know damn well you lying." And then, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he we... gave a thumbs let's down on, to let's the move fans, on the like we game. hate him. I don't hate you, Julius. Wait, let's move on to fantasy. I game. don't. Let's move on to fantasy GM, yeah, man. Julius, <laughs> if you don't sign this man's fucking bobblehead, bro, please. <laughs> I just, Please. I just know he's all right. He's all star level. He's all right, good. so we're heading into fantasy GM now. I know it's been a while since we've done like a game type thing on on the show. I think it's been a couple of episodes now. I, I, I remember we we agreed to do a game every episode, and that was just thrown out the window after like episode. Oh, six. the the debates but are fun. It's the like debates a game. are much more fun. But obviously, we decided to bring back a game today, and it is fantasy GM. Basically, the three of us will act as fantasy GMs as the three of us. Go and draft an eight-man team using current NBA players. And then you, the viewer, will decide who has the best eight-man rotation and what team goes farther in the playoffs. Or more of a championship team, I guess. So I have a yeah, if I here. Could, if I'm, I could add on to that, uh, we're making like a, like a playoff rotation. So it's going to yeah. be a starting five and then a guard, forward, and a big. Because, you know, in the playoffs, teams will usually play eight players. So you guys are gonna vote, you know, who's eight man rotation? Like we're not just gonna make it further in the playoffs. Unrealistic, like random, like like Curry, Kyrie, Damian. Like we're gonna build an. It's got a mesh. It's got a mesh. Yeah. So I got a wheel here, and I'm gonna see who goes first, second, and third, and then we're gonna do a snake type thing where the order just goes back and forth. So I'm gonna show you guys right now. We're going first. Let's see who gets first. Z gets the first pick. Thank God for the Honduras Hunter Sapiens. And then, (laughs) what's your team name? The Honduras Huncho Sapiens. All right, let's see who gets second pick. I'm blue, Hoop is red, in case it doesn't focus. And I get the second pick. So, Hoop, you get the last pick. Hoops, Hoopers. There you going go. three, we got the snake. <laughs> we got the snake. So, basically, it's going to go Z first, me second, Hoop third, Hoop fourth, me fifth, Z sixth. Yeah. Just so yeah. you understand the draft order, in case you don't understand what a snake draft order is. But, Z, kick us off and tell us who your first pick of the draft is. With the first pick... Of the La Fantasy Draft draft, the Honduras Huncho Sapiens select Luka Doncic. Ooh, okay. Well, that makes it much yeah, plot easier for twist. Me. The second pick for the Insanies, I choose Giannis Antetokounmpo. Hmm. Spooky. I cannot. I he took Luka. Yeah. Over Steph. Yeah, I know it's soccer, isn't it? Yeah. It's so. I mean, this makes my life easy. I'm taking Steph Curry as my point guard. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I have the snake. So you go again. Which means... Are, oh, how, how is this happening? I'll take, happening? I'll take a Curry-LeBron duo. I'm with that. Curry LeBron? Oh, he's just going... Nah, he's just using the views now. Okay, oh my yeah, god, LeBron. Steph and LeBron are on the same team? They're right. automatically the best LeBron's team. my power forward. With my second pick, I'm going to go with Nikola Jokic. So a Giannis Jokic backcourt or frontcourt. That's dirty. That is that's tough. That's tough. I thought we were going like down PG to center. No, no. But it's no. fine. No. It's whatever. Um. Okay, cool. For my power, for my pick, I would like my power forward to be Zion Williamson. Ooh. Ooh that's a good mm, pick. It's, mm, it's Healthy, crazy, isn't it? Pick. I can mess with that. Luca and Zion, that's a tough duo. All right, you got another pig, Z. All right, bet. Um, for my shooting guard, I would like to take 
Paul George. Ooh, yep. okay, I like that. I mean, in the playoffs though. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, well, when you got you got Luca on that, you team, got Luka. Huh? I was about to say, yeah, it's not the Luca. It's literally also Luca. The all-time playoff performer. All right, so I got my pick right. Ooh, I gotta, I, I gotta play this out right, man. I'm gonna take Jimmy fun. Butler. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna take Jimmy Butler. So he's got no guards yet. Yeah. Uh huh. But there's so there's so much guard talent that I'd rather get my bigs out the way and forwards out the way. Of course. Um. Joel Embiid. Ooh, oh my Embiid. goodness! I forgot about Embiid. I, I, what? Embiid. I was about to hit him. I was about to hit him. Bro, <laughs> That's a bro I got. No, I you're got, a genius. I got Steph Curry, LeBron James, and Joel Embiid. Who yeah. am I going with next? Mm, 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 mm. I. Uh, mm, this is Kevin tough. Durant. What? what is dog? How are y'all letting me do this, man? Durant? Curry, LeBron, and B. Durant. All right, with I my heard Durant fourth wasn't pick. even top five anymore. Uh, I gotta play this smart. Mm. Are we assuming <laughs> that they're healthy and playing every game? Yes, hundred percent. Kyrie Irving. Okay. It's my pick now. Yeah, I'm writing all this down. By the way, bet, 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 bet. It's my pick now, right? Yep. Correct. You have to. For my for the next entrant into the Honduras Huncho Sapiens. We select Kawhi Leonard. Oh, I was yeah. gonna take him next, man. I shouldn't have taken Kyrie. I should have taken Kawhi well, first. I this is as soon as he said, "Are you taking health into account?" I yeah. thought you were gonna pick yeah. Kawhi. Yeah, I know, but yeah. I chose Kyrie. I, I don't know why I said that. I was going to go. Mm, I don't know either. He's not even gonna show up. Anyway, moving forward. Who's your next pick? Oh, it's mine now. Yeah. yeah. Still okay, Snake. Yeah, you're right. Um, for my final pick. We need well, no, seven. you got eight, you got eight. You got to. I'm talking on. about in the in the starting lineup. Yeah. Um, if we're taking health into account, I'm gonna pick Anthony Davis. I saw I saw that coming. That's mm-hmm. a nice pick. That's a nice mm-hmm. pick. If we're taking health into account, I need a shooting hey, guard. A Zion Anthony Davis mm-hmm. that front court is cold. I need a shooting guard. I need a shooting guard. I'm gonna take. Ah, this is hard, man. This is hard. You took my pick, bro. You can you can <laughs> take a bench. You can take a bench piece and then circle back to the shooting. No, no, no. That's a dumb idea. Um, okay. <laughs> you no, not me. like you're a dummy, but I'd be mean, like, I'm gonna take Tatum, and I'll just put Butler at the shooting. Oh game. damn it! I'll take Tatum. I want to take. Well, personally, I'm actually gonna take a bench piece before I take my whoever it is shooting guard. Um. Give me. Dame mm. Lillard as a six man. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not Good. mad at it. And then. You're going to take a shooting guard or another bench piece? Uh, I am going to take. Hmm. Please don't take him. Give me Devin Booker. Oh, Damn thank it. oh God. my God. Thank God. As my first bench piece, I'm taking a center. I'm taking Carl Anthony Towns. Okay. Mm. I'm okay with him matching up with Joel Embiid. I'm cool with that. Off the bench, though, he's my bench piece. You're you're matching up against Jokic uh, as my starter. I need a bench piece. Mm. You're acting mm. like Cat's gonna get crazy minutes. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You're you're gonna get Jokic on you. Okay. And okay. Giannis, Giannis um, is bullying Joel, bro. Off the bench, this is so tough. I have a snake, right? Yes, yeah, so you got two picks, bro. Okay, cool. So off the bench, give me Demar DeRozan. Okay, Demar, Demar, and then I want a point guard. So give me Trey Young, Luca and Trey. Okay, okay, yeah. For my next. For my next, uh, wait, I gotta see, man. I gotta hold up. This is getting interesting. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, there's a lot of guys to choose from here. How do I want to play this? I, I need to get a forward next, right? You have to go a guard, forward, and center. For your bench, it's a guard, forward, and a big. Okay, so I already have my big. I could go with a guard here. I could just go with. I'll take. 
I don't want to make this decision, man. This is hard. Nah, I'm, I'm circling back <laughs> between two guys right now. And hey, I don't we got We got to keep it pushing. Yeah, yeah we do. I'm taking. Give me Harden off the bench. Screw it. Okay. I believe in okay. Harden. I believe in Harden. Okay. Harden's so now a guard, I got right. We consider him a guard. Yeah, we do. We do. Of course. So I have two picks to end off my draft. Um, as of now, I have Steph, Book, Durant, LeBron, and Bead with Dame as a six man. Mm. Um. A good team. So I'm gonna start off. People are making saying Cat's gonna, you know, do work on on beat. I need to back up big. Uh, I'll take Rudy Gobert. Ah, oh, you okay? Okay. That's, that's not. <laughs> it's a solid defensive piece. Uh... And then for my forward off the bench, there's still a lot of good options. But I'm I'm gonna take a glue guy. Give me Mikael Bridges. Okay. I yeah. think he I meshes like well with anyone. I like that. There. So it's my turn to He's, choose my. I, I might put him in a starting lineup. I could low key take. Oh but, word! I think Mikhail is the best glue player. So I'm gonna actually. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Sandy. Is it my my last thing has to be a forward, correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is hard, man. This is hard. There's okay. someone that I would have taken if I didn't want a glue piece. Yeah, I'm trying to think, man. I don't want to make the wrong choice. I see here. Like, I, I have someone in mind, but I don't want to make the wrong choice. Well, just make the choice, and the viewers will tell you if it's wrong or not. We got to keep it pushing. Push and keep, bro. I don't want to say it. No, 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 no. There's no time. There's no time. Hold up. Yes, there is a time. We didn't say that at the beginning. We didn't say that. Now there is a time. Z's phone's about to die. Oh, God. Okay, my bad. All right, I'll take... I'll take... um. I'll take Siakam off the bench. As my okay. pick. I, yeah, that's a good pick. Yeah. Very good pick. Okay, so my last pick would be, have to be a forward, right? Yeah. Oh, tough. Um, give me, give me Jared Allen. Ooh. And then you have one more. Yeah. Wait, hoop. Sorry, what were your last two picks, by the way? Uh, Mikhail Gobert and Mc Mikhail Bridges. Mikhail. Okay. That's who it was. Yo, these are some good teams. And then what's your last pick? You need to get a guard. I can't guard. believe y'all y'all let Durant slip to like the tenth overall pick. You need a guard, Z. I need another guard. I got Demar Trey and Jarrett. So I need I thought that was eight, right? That's eight. Oh, that's eight. You're well, done. My bad. Yeah, my bad. I forgot the snake. I, I I assume the snake. All right, so we're done our teams. I have them all written out. Um uh, I think every one of these teams could win the game. Like they're they're all very good teams. I'm not gonna <laughs> well, lie. Let's, On paper, let's I think Z off. has the worst team. Wow, all right, so read, read, read them off then. Yeah, right. right you want me to read off all the teams? Accusation. You want me to read off all the teams? Yeah, let's read it off. All right, I'll do the starting lineups, and then I'll do the bench. At, we'll compare benches after, but let's do the starting lineups. Um, all right, cool. Z starting lineup is Luke at the point guard, uh, Paul George at the shooting guard, Kawhi at the small forward, Zion at the four, and then Anthony Davis at the five. That's my the starting, lineup. Apparently. My starting lineup is... Kyrie at the one, Butler at the two, Tatum at the three, Giannis at the four, and Jokic at the five. And then Hoops lineup is the old man lineup. He got Steph at the one, <laughs> Mikhail at the two. LeBron no, I don't. I got three. I got Book at the two. Oh, you want to put Book on the? I thought you said you want Mikhail on the bench. I'll, I'll, hey, Mikhail's off the bench. Right? Mikhail, I'll take Mikhail off the bench. You want Mikhail off the but bench I, now? Okay. He's someone who could play big minutes though. Okay, Steph at the one, Booker at the two, LeBron at the three, Durant at the four, and Beat at the five. I don't know if you want to switch LeBron and Durant around. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I think that team has the best space. I think my team is the best team. I think mine is the best team. Kyrie, I think mine's the Kyrie, best team. Kyrie, Butler, Tatum, Giannis, and Jokic. Like, come on. Uh, Luka, my team is PG young. And my team is young. My team is aggressive. Like, what? My team is young. My team is hungry. I got like, come on. No, 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 no. I, I'm Z. From the bottom of my heart, I love you. I think it's a competition between me and Hoop right now. It's not really. Yours is kind of up in the I, air. You I'm guys... just, I love Z's lineup. In you know, you can see, you can see my lineup going far. No, I, I have so my many problem, options on my lineup. My problem, yeah, is obviously, the spacing. all of our lineups win the championship if they put them. If you Z, put them my the problem's the spacing. Like when Luca, let's say Luca's the primary playmaker, that's the mm -hmm. way you're using him best. I I understand like PG and Kawhi can knock down shots, but in terms of be, making them spot up shoot, like how would the how would the team work? Well, honestly, I'm glad that you asked because the Hun the Honduras Huncho Sapiens are essentially run by uh, Coach Zizi Huncho, uh, with a with with a primary focus on defense, uh, also uh, utilizing the playmaking ability that Luka Doncic has, uh, utilizing the shot making ability that Paul George has, and being arguably the best two way player in the game. 
Uh, and then you have Kawhi, who's also arguably the best two-way player in the game. Uh, not to mention Zion Williamson and Anthony Davis in the front court, uh, leading that with athleticism and pure dominance. And Luke then off the, bench, the Zion lobs are crazy. Luke, yeah. And then off the bench, I feel like I'm sitting pretty because I would I, imagine Trey coming off the bench for Luka. You still have a playmaker. Demar coming off the bench for PG. You still got a score. And Jared Allen can play with Zion or Anthony Davis in the paint, and you're not doing a damn thing. So the Hunt, the Honduras Huntsville Sapiens at the end of the day are the best team. If you don't believe that, um, crawl under a hole and cover that hole up and stay there. Um, <laughs> but it's fine. We're vibing. All right. It's up to you guys though. Yeah, oh. Saini, why is your team the best team? Um, my team is the best team because they were drafted by me and <laughs> they're just the best. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh I, I think like as far as like mesh wise and on top of the talent, I think my team works the best. I mean, I have Butler who's arguably the best two way player in the game. Him and Paul George are up there, right? Like that's exactly why I took him, honestly. Z gave me uh or I think I took him before Z took Kawhi. I wanted to pair Kawhi and Butler, but whatever. Butler is arguably one of the best two-way players in the game. I made sure to focus on defense with Giannis. Uh, that's why I took Giannis as my first guy because I wanted a, 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 a defensive man in the front court because I know Jokic, as, as great of a player as he is, I don't think of him as purely a defensive big. Um, but Jokic, obviously I had to take Jokic. He was the MB, reigning NBA MVP. Talent is there. Kyrie, bucket getter, unguardable. I, when, it, when it came to the guard spot, I thought that you guys were honestly going to focus – um, on getting a guy like Marcus Barr or Mikhail Bridges like uh, in your lineup. So I wanted to pick a guy that was unguardable. That's why I kind of took Kyrie Irving because I assumed he was healthy. Kyrie healthy playing every game is a top three-point guard in the league. We can all agree on that. Um, or shooting guard, whatever he's listed as now. He's a point guard for me. Uh, Tatum, obviously I took Tatum because it's Jason Tatum. I don't know. I don't know. I don't because know if he's I need inconsistent. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey, with a team like with a team like this around him, he's not gonna eat. He, he just needs to get buckets. That's all I need to do. And I think <laughs> when the pressure's off him, pff, he's gonna be a real bucket getter. Um I think my, my lineup is solid, like way more than solid actually. My lineup is beautiful. I think I picked guys that work well together. We've seen Kyrie and Tatum work together. Um Giannis and Jokic, Barely. I feel like that can work out. And Jimmy Butler can play beside anybody in the league. So I, I haven't seen Jimmy Butler's basic ass dunks. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so starting off with my lineup, it's it's Curry, Booker, uh, KD, LeBron, and Bede. And then you got Dame, Gobert, and Mikhail Bridges off the bench. Uh, Mikhail can play heavy starter minutes. I just like my team because with LeBron as a primary playmaker, he could drop off to Embiid, let him do his MVP caliber work, d- a defensive anchor. Um, but with LeBron, he has spot-up shooters all around him. Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Devin Booker. That's where I feel like my team separates, whereas I feel like you guys have a lot of volume scorers. And while my guys are volume scorers, I'm comfortable with Steph catching shooting three. He changes the whole dynamic of the team on offense. Booker, comfortable with that. He does it from Chris Paul all the time. That's why I drafted Mikhail Bridges. Um, I just think there's a lot of offensive versatility. Uh, you know, with Dame there, you could have a, a Curry Dame backcourt with LeBron feeding the ball, with Bridges and Embiid still out there uh, that are great defensively. You and could, then you could let you could say Durant take over with with a uh, with a playmaker like Jokic with a bunch of spots. I personally guys feel, I, I I agree that your guys can shoot. I personally feel that my guys are better spot up shooters, but you know, it's, we we can totally disagree. But that's why I think my team's the best. So it's up to the up to the I think up to I'm the viewers. Lie, I think it's very hard to decide who has the better team. I think it's all based on what you would rather as a as a coach or a yeah. GM. Like all of our teams are very like this is like all of them are unfair. These are all yeah. these are all eighty two and O teams. <laughs> like nobody is beating this team in a, in a lineup unless we're com- unless we're playing each other. Like our teams are playing against each other. Yeah, no team in that league is even touching this. This, but I I, I did like it. this was fun. This so in a playoff right. series, the question is, in a playoff series, if we were to all play each other like an even amount, who would come out with the most wins? Who would beat the other two teams? Or do you think one team would beat one team and then another team beats that Yeah, that's team? another thing. Like, like each yeah, of us like, play... Dude, how do they match yeah. up? Yeah, ooh, that's a good... I feel like my team would probably sweep y'all's. Yeah. yeah. Honestly... <laughs> <laughs> I love how he said that like so like casually. He was like, I feel like I would sweep you guys. <laughs> I just don't see anyone on your team chasing staff like that i'm not gonna personally. lie hoop like, or, i'll just put Kawhi i'm not gonna lie to you i think mine and hoops teams beat you in a seven game series why are you so i i like these i like, I like a lot. It too. i think I he like has the too. best defensive i like team. it too i like I do. it too i know i do saney saney knows i do too he's just saney is trashing 
All right, we should make this a Saney versus Seed thing. I want to see what's the best. I'm, 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 right right I'm telling you right now. Put the teams in 2K and let's run it. I, let's Facts. Do it. Let's do it my GM. Facts. Okay, there we go. That's how we're going to decide this. We're going to put them in 2K. Right, we're going to see what team does better. Yeah, once Saney gets his 2K back because he, he rage quit it. Eight days in <laughs> February, I deleted You know why I rage quit it? Because they made Westbrook below an 80 and I deleted the game. Oh my I made God. A video. I, was like, I, Ronnie, I was like, Ronnie, I'm never playing this game again. And then I pre-ordered 2K23. But uh, I DM'd Ronnie 2K one time because I got mad that I lost. This was back in high school. I got mad I lost. I DM'd him this long paragraph explaining what's wrong with the game. I remember specifically, I was like, how do you expect me to use Kevin Durant if he's open? And this is on 2K21. So I was like, if I have to solve a math problem to get the shot meter to go green, I hate this game. Literally stop making 2K games. Like, it was wild. I deleted it, though. He doesn't even make um, them. He's just a guy that does the social media. He's just I know, a face. Right? He's just a scapegoat. <laughs> hey, he's more should, or less a scapegoat. We should continue because we're kind of running, uh, we're, we're running past the Well, time. we're in, into the juice, the Le Q and a 16%. Here we go, baby. Le Q and a Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most must-see part of the entire freaking show. The part where you... The fans ask us, the boys, the hottest, the spiciest, the nastiest, pause, questions for us to answer live right here on the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to La Q&A, presented by Chalkboard HQ. So the first question that we have today comes from Hoop King, ironically. Uh, it says, if you were an NBA rookie, what team would you want to get drafted by? Now, I don't want you to answer that question. I want you to answer this question. I'm going to flip and remix your question, Hoop King. If you were an NBA rookie, what team would you most definitely not want to get drafted by? Like, is, if you got drafted by this team, like, you would just walk out of the freaking draft. I have my answer. Go. The Sacramento Kings. I would not, okay. I would not want to be drafted by the Sacramento Kings. I understand. I, uh, I would like Sacramento, to be completely honest. Like, I my personality, I don't like getting yelled at. Uh, when I feel like I don't deserve it. So I wouldn't oh, want to play in New York. I'd love to play for the Knicks and say I play for the Knicks, but a rookie in New York, I would feel so much pressure. Mm -hmm. I'd so much rather just go ball out in an empty gym in Sacramento. I'll be completely honest. I feel you. For I, me, I, it, I want to build a legacy, and you can't build a legacy. LA would, well, you can when you get traded or you force your way out. But I'd, you know, I think LA would probably be the worst. Like in New York, they'd be the sugar coating of, oh, I love, you know, it's my favorite team. But I think LA would be my least favorite destination. I was talking about franchise. I wasn't thinking about like my actual life. Like I would not want to be drafted to Los Angeles because the taxes there are crazy. The living cost is crazy. Well, that's what we're taking into account. Oh, I thought we were just saying like as a team, what team would you not want to be a part of? Like I wouldn't want the Indian, the Indiana the Pacers, the Indiana what? Pacers. Why is that? Because, bro. Like if I feel like if I played for the <laughs> if I if I played for the Indiana Pacers, bro. Like like what is what what am I aiming for? I'm aiming for a championship. I mean, like any they're, other no, basketball no, no, team. No, this is what this is this this is what it is. Okay, there's a lot of people that can come out of Indiana, like that were born in Indiana, like Larry Bird, for example, the Hick from French Lick. I'm not that person. So if you drop me off, if I'm at the draft and you mean to tell me that I'm getting drafted by the Indiana Pacers, I'm immediately gonna wonder what the hell is in Indiana for me to do outside of the practice facility. On top of that, if I was drafted by the Indiana Pacers, is is my ceiling winning a championship? Or being in the same conversation with Reggie Miller. I don't know what the I don't know what I'm gonna be shooting for. Like I'm gonna be there for like seven years. Like look at DeMontis Sabonis. This man was literally praised. One and all was an all-star in Indiana. Then he gets drafted, then he gets traded away literally a season later. Now he's stuck in Sacramento. But they don't Miles got hate for no one. Like PG just has the most nostalgic memories in Indiana. Like yeah, there's nothing us, bad about PG in Indiana. I don't give a damn. PG went to game seven with the Miami Heat. If you mean to tell me you can squeeze seven games out of the Heatles, bruh, and you still couldn't do anything, like, I'll just be like, I'm packing it up, bruh. Trade me. Get me out of here. I'm done. No. There's nothing in Indiana. No championship so, glory. No championship pedigree. No damn near no championship desire. Like, it's nothing. It's literally nothing. No. Oh, no. that's one of the biggest basketball states in the world. Yeah, you're Dude, tripping, the, I would love I'm to play I'm talking about Indiana. for the National Basketball Association. I would want to see y'all get drafted by the Indiana Pacers. What the hell are y'all going to do? Like What's I'm wrong with that? I'm happy to be I a just, Pacer. I'm do you know any? Do y'all know any Pacers fans? Be honest. Yeah. Who? I'm understanding. Hey, Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, whatever, whatever. Whatever, whatever. Go ahead, Hoop. Say what you need to say. I, I just, like, they're they're mid at worst. Like a middle ground team to get. I don't know yeah, why you hate like, India. Not, it's like, like it's like you hating. Didn't you hate the uh, Sacramento oh, Kings? No, there's something else you hate with a burning passion for no reason. Was it the yeah. Raptors mascot? Uh, no, it what was, was the, it? Uh, it was stuffed the dragon. The Orlando. Yeah, dragon. why? <laughs> Orlando, like he just for no no reason. 
You mean to tell me that if I was an Orlando Magic fan and I'm bringing my kid to the freaking whatever their arena is called. Stuff the Magic Dragon is awesome. Dad, can I see Stuff the Dragon? He no, you're not seeing the greatest stuff nothing. dunk assist of all time on that hoverboard to Aaron Gordon. Mm -hmm. no, like, see, what makes him happened, bad? No, no, no. Something happened His to him name, with Stuff the Dragon. Something happened he, to him I can't, with Stuff I, the Dragon. ZZ Huncho was in Orlando one time. Legally, <laughs> legally, legally, <laughs> legally, I'm not allowed to talk about it, but me and Stuff got beef, basically. <laughs> stuff better keep playing. I'm going to unstuff his ass. Anyway, moving forward. <laughs> Um, what, what are y'all, this comes from Purple Swaggers, you already know, one of our OGs, one of our vets. What are your favorite LeBron nicknames? This should be interesting. Ooh. Well, the GM is a classic. It is. I, I like yeah. the, I like the Le nicknames that aren't disrespectful. They're just mm -hmm. complete, like, so random and hilarious. Because of I know. I, I have one off the top of my head that still is my number one to this day. What is it? I remember this was like maybe a year and a half ago, but I was on Instagram and it was some LeBron had said or tweeted something about China. I don't know what it was. Something was going on overseas and LeBron tweeted about it like he always does. And I go to the comment section and the first comment I see is Le Communist. I started <laughs> rolling. I was crying. It was, I was like, what? <laughs> Like, like that, like what? Like, Le Communist is just hilarious to me. Like, I think what? we're, uh, we also got to talk about La Podcast here. That's it's the best nickname podcast. of all time. I don't, I don't know. Favorite. There might only be one or two better podcast nicknames at this point in time for a basketball podcast. The only one I have in mind is the name of my 2K My Team. If we were in England and we were basketball fans, we'd call it the Boston Three Party. <laughs> That, that, okay, that, that is it. Or, or in Boston, rather, not England. Boston. I think I think the podcast is the best podcast name for a basketball podcast. It really, I think it really might be like unironically. Oh I, 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 hey, like, and, and we hold up, we did it before the LeBron, memes came yeah, out. Yeah, literally. All right, all right, we had that on lock. We know that. You we know, know that. All even, right. Even if by some chance we didn't, and something came out before we realized what the podcast was, who's doing it like us? We're the biggest of podcasts in the world. I know there's like two other La podcasts that you can find. <laughs> the uh, one of them's French, and then the other one is like Lay Lay podcast. If you look up yeah. La podcast I'm, on Google, guess what comes we, up? We. A description of our podcast. Not that. exactly. There's Crazy. a big difference between La podcast and Lay podcast. All right, I know Z's podcast. phone is about to yeah, yeah, so give let's, out let's on where this. Where we at? Where we at? Twelve percent. Twelve percent. Let's go. Let's go. All right, we're gonna fight to the finish. Who would average? This is coming from M Polo. Shout out to you. Uh, who would average mo the more points? Curry in the 90s or Jordan in today's era? Curry in the 90s. Fair. Um, they did I might say know. Jordan. They, they had I want to say Jordan. Their defense back then, bro. That's true. But I feel, uh, like, they would, well, you feel like they wouldn't. If Steph yeah. gets two threes back to back, would they not like press the, up? Jordan style, the Jordan style of play is is known in this era. Like guys like Damar, we've seen guys like Kobe. Like that. That's a, they're, they're reincarnations of Jordan. There was no Curry back then. There was no I'll guys say Curry. like Curry, so Curry is different. So Curry would have been different, I, and it would have been it would have been harder to guard Curry back then than Jordan. I right think now. Jordan would have to adapt his game to average even a close amount of points as it did back then. And, and we're assuming he's not doing that, so I'll say Curry. Okay, fair. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say Curry too, because just imagine dropping light skin Jesus in the '90s. That would change everything. Um, next up is from us. You should probably only like one one more so your phone doesn't die. All right. Um, well, this is going to be a quick one anyway. So this is from Sabur, S-E-B-R. Shout out to you. This is a quick one. What NBA player has the best step back? James Harden. James We're Harden. Talking prime or? Prime Kemba. Uh, oh, God. Prime Kemba. Prime, prime Kemba. It's yeah. disgusting. Prime Kemba is the. Yo. Bro, that, that step back he had in UConn for the win is yeah. still to this day the greatest step back I have ever seen. Like, oh my goodness, he literally jumped from the free throw line to the three point line. In yeah, one I'd step. say I'd say the most effective would be James Harden, but the nastiest yeah. is the probably nastiest Prime Kemba. Kemba. Yeah, that was a good right, looking name. And what a All way right, to now, wrap up the show. Wait a minute, obviously we have our secret segment. Like, wait, look, look at I had another, up. Wait, I had oh, you have another, another one? question. Yeah, that was the last, that was one. last one. Sandy I jumped said that the was gun. A quick one. I said it was oh, a quick, quick one. Hold on, my bad, my bad. Yeah, I'm still on. Well, now you know Sandy's secret segment is coming. Jesus. Anyway, um, I didn't even put down who this came from. So if this is you, shout out to you. Uh, let us know in the chalkboard. By the way, uh, drop more questions in the chalkboard to be featured on the show. I don't know if I preference that. But the last question is simple. It's a fun one. If Adam Silver wanted to make a band out of NBA players, 
Who would play what instrument? Jimmy Kyle Butler is on the stage. Right. Jimmy Butler is on the stage. Victor Oladipo is the front, is the lead singer. Yes. yes. Zion yes. is playing the trumpet. Says Joel who? Embiid is on. Joel Embiid's on ad libs. <laughs> oh. I would love that. I would love Joel Embiid to be ad libbing in the back Russell of the Russell Westbrook is playing the drums. Yes. Yes. With bricks. Bro, imagine Zion um, with the trumpet. What? Like, that'd be crazy. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Zion would play the trumpet. I don't hey, know. Juan Toscano Anderson definitely got some rhythm. Yeah. I'm gonna throw him some, on a tambourine. Or some maracas or something. He'd be chilling. Big My man. I don't, what would LeBron do? Would he be the, condu the conductor? No, I feel LeBron, like LeBron, <laughs> LeBron, LeBron, LeBron would be recording the band and lip syncing the wrong lyrics. Right. He'd be like this. He'd be he'd be saying this one, patting his head with with, with Rick and <laughs> <Depot> singing. <laughs> oh, if we're going all time, Iman Shumpert is definitely a musician. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Damian Lillard. He was on Dan he was on Dancing with the Star. Oh, Dame. Yeah. I forgot about Dame. Lonzo you forgot Miles Bridges were excluding. Lonzo Ball. Miles Bridges were excluding. No, nah, Miles Bridges would just make a rival rap group and just go at these. <laughs> Miles Bridges isn't in the NBA anymore, so he can't be in this discussion. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's the end of the Q&A. 27 days, 27 <laughs> nights, 27 years, 27 fights. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward, um, SSS, please. Okay, so save, on to, save our, our, ship. On to our secret segment, <laughs> my secret segment. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this discussion on the internet. I think, like, if you think about it, I guess you could debate it, but I think the answer is pretty clear. Um, there's a lot of people debating right now. Who would you rather have, Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum? What? Oh, well, I remember we had Crafty on the show. He tried yeah, to tell us. But there's Chase a big Jaylen thing about Brown. I don't know why people are discussing that. They're like, Again? Oh. And a lot of people are taking Jalen Brown. That's the thing. The thing is, like, I've thought about it. I don't hate it as much as I used to. But if you're talking future, I'm taking Jason Tatum. Exactly. I feel like every Boston's front office. You should be looking fans. at the future, too. They, they, like, it's not Always. for everybody that's taking Brown. Like, here's the thing, right? I feel like if they ever split these two up, Tatum is going to be the future. It's like no secret. Why do you think they're showing Deuce? Are they showing Jalen Brown, son, daughter, sister, mother, anything? No. They're showing Deuce and Tatum. I don't, even, I don't even know who Jason Tatum's baby mama is. That's not even important. But the point of the matter is, is that if Jalen Brown ends up off the team, right, and he's the one that has to go, Jalen Brown's going to do well. Like, he's, he's going to do phenomenal as the number one piece on another franchise where he's just the star, doesn't have to worry about – uh, the front office trying to pick sides. Like, Jalen Brown's going to be fine. And vice versa. If Jalen Brown in some hypothetical weird universe is the one that they pick and Tatum goes off, they're both going to be fine. So I don't really understand what's the point of this freaking discussion. We have them mm -hmm. together right now. They just made it to the finals. They lost. They both choked. They both had terrible young amateur moments, rookie moments in the finals. It's okay. They can make it back to the finals and have a way better run. I believe that because you only grow and mature as a player as you get older. But it's, I don't know why we keep having this freaking discussion. Y'all know that ain't nothing going to happen unless Boston makes a move. And when Boston makes a move, y'all know what the probability is of who's going to get moved. Stop debating it. Just sit back and wait. Like, yeah. Bro. And adding on to that, I remember a while ago I said that the Celtics should trade for KD. My mindset has probably changed on that. Um, more so because not the age of Kevin Durant, but the uncertainties of playing with him injury-wise – yeah, um, I do think Jason Tatum has a lot of room to grow in terms of consistency, and mm -hmm. I think I gave him, I gave the Celtics an unfair summary by judging them off this past playoff performance, right. and it was more so the fact, you know, I thought they were outmatched by the Bucks, but a lot of the time Tatum was not consistent. Mm -hmm. So if he had room to grow, I think you take that chance instead of bringing in Kevin Durant. You keep the core. I think I've changed my opinion on that, but that's why we first had the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Would, yeah for sure. Would you rather have KD with I Brown? Think recency, or recency bias affects us all. I think we all always have an opinion that's masked masked by recency yeah. bias, which is fine. I mean, that's a thing with sports. But this was a great episode, guys. Uh, personally, I'm taking Jason Tatum. If you guys want my answer, you guys have given the reasons why. But um, great way to end off episode 14 on the road to 100 episodes. Yes, sir. Oh God. All right. Oh well, God. Um, as always, it was great having you guys listen to us talk about basketball.
And hey, the game. NBA season's coming up. It's going to get a lot, when a lot NBA, hotter if soon. If you thought the podcast was good, now just give us a season to talk. Bro, about. this is this is not. We're just making y'all don't, thoughts y'all don't out of even, thin air right we're now. Just literally, we're y'all setting don't the foundation even know. up, man. Just wait for it. And the in person. Y'all don't even know the podcast is taking over TikTok when the NBA season arrives. I hey, I'm staying. I'm TikTok. staying humble. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're just gonna let it <laughs> happen. happen. Oh All God. Right. Humble. Oh, by the way, if I sound better, it's because I got some new equipment. Z's getting some new stuff too. So Should by the next by episode, the shout out. We're, we're gonna be we're shout gonna out be Australia. Set. That's all I'm gonna say for shout now. Out that, Australia. That's your little hint. October first. Wait on it. All right, guys. Yep. Thank you for listening. Peace. Peace. Peace.